Hello everyone, so I wanted to start today's video by saying that I never really want to make videos on Trisha Paytas. It's just sometimes things happen and I have to make videos on Trisha Paytas. Today is one of those days because recently there's been a trend going on over on TikTok. Essentially an account called Bloat Fly Girl asks the question, Does anybody have any like wicked random celebrity beef? And TikTokers give their answer for the celebrity beef that they have. Mine for example would be the fact that Cave Town called me sad. To which I thought, you know, who can blame me? Boys will be bugs. Or in my case, boys will be a twat. Now of course I wouldn't be making this video if Trisha hadn't taken part in this trend. But unlike any other TikToker who may have done one or two celebrity beefs, I can't count how many Trisha has done. It's at least in the triple digits at this point. This trend has only been going on for two weeks and I have enough content from Trisha here to make an entire video about it. With that being said, I don't suffer for nothing here on the James Marriott channel. So please do subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And also follow me on Instagram because none of you follow me on Instagram and it makes me really sad. Trisha's first celebrity beef was with Tyra Banks. Who would have known that Nat West could get so sleepy? Mine was with Tyra Banks. I was not pushing or pulling for intention. In fact, they paid me and asked me to be on her show. Producers of the show told me I was there just to be myself. That wouldn't be nice to me. The episode was about taking your hair out and showing your real hair. They cut my hair and didn't tell me. Does anyone else feel a bit dazed? Do you know that jovial tone that the maker of this trend had at the beginning? I don't think she was really expecting a fucking essay on why you don't like Tyra Banks, Trisha. He faced with Tyra because she was extremely rude for no reason. She told me my hair was fried. She was like telling the producers to get me off the stage. I didn't belong on her show. She didn't want me on her show. What would you really really expect going on an American talk show if you weren't a celebrity. They're not going to ask you anything of meaning. They're certainly not going to invite you onto America's Next Top Model, especially with a Neapolitan haircut like that. She also made one about another talk show host, Ellen. Don't have any issues with Ellen myself. Definitely never made a video on her. Ellen DeGeneres. She was extremely annoyed the whole time with this segment. We were actually told to not even look her in the eye. We were also told not to touch her. Trisha, you're saying we. Can anyone else who's ever been on Ellen's show say that you weren't allowed to touch her? And also the not looking in the eyes thing. Is that the one weakness for lizard people being stared at? That doesn't really work well for a talk show though, does it? Imagine if just in every video I was kind of looking here. Hey guys, I will make content for you all, but you're not allowed to look me in the eyes. Bad things happen when you look me in the eyes. Sorry, that was very mini lad of me there. Alan was super charming in the clip, but immediately after she started like wiping herself as if I gave her some like disease. She said she touched me, but I wasn't even allowed back into the green room where my stuff was. They got it for me and met me in the parking lot. Come on, Trisha, being left in the car park isn't all that bad. I have that happen to me all the time. You just need to understand that people like us, we have to park it. This dumpy don't fit in any room. All American rejects. Right, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what the all American rejects are. That's going to really upset some of you. Oh, it's the band that did Gives You Hell. Is that actually about Trisha Paytas? At least we know that Trisha can't have affected Ellen because she most certainly did not see her face. Saddens me to say that the lead singer from the all American rejects was not the nicest. I remember him distinctly being when they said, oh, now push them back together. He's like, Oh, I have to touch her? Oh, that can't be nice. That can't be nice. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he just didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Maybe he was just a very loyal guy. He probably wasn't, okay? He probably just didn't want to go anywhere near you. I'm surprised Trisha put Tyra Banks as her first beef. Ellen didn't want to see her or smell her. Tyson Ritter, by the way, what an awful name that is. He didn't even want to put his hand on her to push her. And yet your issue is with Tyra Banks. I just don't get it. Trisha then goes on to some more positive interactions she's had with celebrities. The first of which is Howard Stern. Just overtly nice. Took pictures with me after and I just like wasn't expecting that from Howard Stern and it was like leaving me speechless. Eric Stone Street on Modern Family. Oh my God. Okay, no, I've just realized that now what she's doing is one positive experience followed by a negative one because she understands just as much as the rest of us do. Positivity on the internet simply does not work. In fact, I implore you, go into my comment section right now, comment something awful about yourself or me. Let's get this video to a million views through negativity alone. They didn't really talk to me. They weren't mean or anything, but Eric went above and beyond to say hi and like welcome me and he was really cool. Oh, okay, no, I got it wrong. She said something nice about Eric Stone Street. I would have been surprised if he was a dick, actually. He's always given me nice, like, cuddly vibes. But then she does call Steve-O a misogynist. Steve-O has always been a misogynistic to me, so like for part two if you want to know that story. Okay, so I thought this next one would be Steve-O. Uh, it's not. It's with uh, a celebrity called Brian Callan. That's a good celeb. Brian Callan, my favorite celeb celebrity. Brian Callan. My favorite celebrity, American stand-up comedian, actor, writer, podcaster, celebrity. Let's see what went wrong with him. They didn't make me, but they asked me to take my hoodie off and my bra off, to which they totally obliterated my natural boobs in front of a live audience. Oh my God. Trisha Paytas has gone through a lot. Okay, she puts herself through all of these scenarios. No one forces her to go on these TV shows. But the only equivalent we really have to that here in the UK is Naked Attraction. And that's a really wholesome experience. As wholesome as it can be to take off your clothes in front of randomers and have them judge your character strictly 
totally by your aesthetics. But everyone always comes off that show saying they had a great time. This is Trisha's third example of a talk show and she had an awful experience. At what point do you just stop going on talk shows? I started sobbing and it was in front of a live audience. Does anybody have any like wicked random- it's so weird when it cuts back to that woman at the beginning. I was completely scarred. Does anybody have any weird celebrity beef? I've not smiled since. Weird celebrity beefs. Matthew McConaughey, no. Okay, more nice, wonderful experiences I've had with celebrities. Oh. Thank God. Right there, I see his ass and his calves. You see, this is a roller coaster. Usually in my TikTok videos, we'll be going through negative after negative. It'll keep you watching. It'll keep me wanting to die. But I like the sprinklings of variety in this video. You don't know what you're gonna get. Is Trisha gonna be scarred? Yes, probably Trisha's gonna be scarred. There's Matthew McConaughey directing me again. These are some paparazzi shots. He also was so nice. He asked if our feet were okay. He asked the crew to get us flats and slippers. And we were just extra, and this is just one of many shots. God. Breathe. What I've noticed from all of these TikToks is that it's just blah, 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 celebrity did this and then I did this other. Oh, oh my god! I feel like I've been recording this video for hours just because of the amount of information my brain has to process every single time you speak. And with that being said, we still got ten days of TikToks to go, and I know for most people, ten days is not that much. But in context, we've done about three. All of these TikToks that we've just watched have been recorded over three days. Ah! Nathan. Fa failed her. Well, he really must have if she's made a TikTok about him. I'll let my, th I'll let myself. Okay, this is a Comedy Central writer, apparently, who stars in his own show. What are we saying, people, then? Positive or negative? I'm thinking positive simply because he's Canadian and I have very good experiences with Canadian people. I don't want to, like, ruin his character or his troll, but Nathan Fielder, super freaking nice. Hey, it's a positive. That's good. Not good for this video because I just want drama. But I guess that's one less person who's been abusive to Trisha. That guy was actually a creep and he's not even anybody, so. Oh, she had to ruin it, didn't she? She, we couldn't have just had one entirely positive TikTok. She had to call out a man who is a nobody. I hate it when influencers call people nobodies or irrelevant. I mean, you all are irrelevant and you probably all are nobodies. But it would just be wrong for me to say that, you know? Okay, we finally got to part two of the Steve-O drama. Finally, we're going to know why Trisha Paytas doesn't like him. I don't know how to feel about this one because I've always gotten good vibes off of Steve-O. Not saying that Trisha Paytas can necessarily change my opinion on someone. I don't know why I even thought that for a second. Steve-O, I've met him now three times just always like ignored me like he just never looks me in the eyes when he was on the h3 podcast recently i asked Ela if he like talked to her and looked at her because she's like she didn't really like notice anything but okay i'm not gonna say he's misogynistic for not looking you in the eyes because by that logic okay is ellen a misogynist is the all-american reject singer a misogynist probably actually probably yes i think you can not want to talk to certain people and not be a misogynist and when it comes to Ela klein's experience i've always found listening to the h3 podcast when they have guests on she does doesn't really get that involved. She's always been a fairly reserved character, at least from what I can tell. So the fact that she's not particularly talkative and she still didn't really understand the experience you had with Steve-O, you can't really go out there and call him misogynist and not expect backlash. I was just reading the comments here. My respect for Trish. That is a roller coaster. This is the thing that I've always thought about Trisha Paytas. I've made a lot of videos on her in my time and a lot of those times people were completely canceling her. But here she is getting hundreds of thousands of views every single TikTok she makes. There really is something about those people who you lot hate that just keeps you coming back for more. I hope that's not what you feel about me. But the same could be said for Nick Ocado Avocado. There's a really big gap between the person he was on the interview I did with him and then the persona that he portrays on his channels. I always felt like he had a really good chance after our interview to just be himself and be likable. But thinking about it, I don't think he'd be as successful as he currently is doing that. What I have said and what I will always say is that if you don't like someone, please don't hate click their content. It does nothing but give them money. Every time you want to hate click someone, just come and hate click one of my videos. You can also hate click my subscribe button. You know when you say, see, or hear the same word over and over again and it just doesn't feel like a word anymore? That's how I feel about this intro. Does anybody have any like wicked random celebrity beef? Does anybody <laughs> what is wicked random celebrity beef anymore? Can I put it between two buns? If I can't, I'm not interested. Nick Cannon. I mean, first of all, that sounds like the name of a wrestler or a porn star. Pretty sure that guy's on America's Got Talent. I think, I'm sorry, I don't watch America's Got Talent. I have taste. Nick was 
horrible. Nick looked at me like I had escaped in there, that I somehow got past everybody. And he literally yelled for security with nobody around, which like security. And I just was standing there and he's just like, you need to get the fuck out of here. I feel like this has escalated so much over this video. It started with people who didn't want to have eye contact with her, moved on to people who didn't want to touch her. And now people who don't even want to be in the same room as her. I mean, come on, she's a human at the end of the day. Questionable, actually. Okay, I, I'm not sure if I can confidently say that. This is why I kind of like YouTube celebrities, okay? Yes, they're all a bunch of losers. And they probably all are narcissistic as well. But at least they don't see themselves as really high above people to the point where they don't want to be in the same room as them. I mean, yes, I am better than the average person, obviously. But I don't mind sharing rooms with people. As long as you don't look me in the eyes or touch me. And you leave the room after five to ten seconds. More celebrities that were really nice and I have no beef with. Jeff Goldblum. Uh, we were hired superheroes for a party that his band was playing at. Jeff Goldblum. Okay, of course he was going to be nice. What I will say is apparently my dad went to one of his jazz concerts and he's a good musician, but also spent a lot of the time just taking selfies with people. Like he had an entire section where he just took selfies with the audience. I'd expect that from someone like Jacob Sartorius <laughs> or me when you come and see me live whenever I get the balls to do that. With that being said, before I end this video, I now have a date for my music video for my song. Very weird talking about it. So that's why I'm saying it like this. The music video for him will drop on January the 1st and then the EP will drop some time after that. I don't know exactly how much time. But yeah, exciting. Thank you everyone for supporting my videos. Thank you everyone for supporting my music. Thank you once again, Trisha, for the wild ride. If you have any more celebrity beef, please do post it on TikTok. It keeps me alive. And I don't just mean that in the entertainment sense. It pays my bills. Please help me. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new or have not done so already. I really do want 2 million subscribers. And with that being said, I will catch you next time.